Should we give you like a countdown? All right. Thanks very much for being with us. Uh, in terms of climate change, the very bad news is we have a president of the United States uh, who does not even understand the reality of climate change and is moving us in exactly the wrong direction. Uh, right now in Poland, the United States government is working with Saudi Arabia and Russia uh, to minimize the devastating impact that climate change is having on this planet and will have in the future, and we are taking on a fossil fuel industry that over a 10-year period spent $1.7 billion in campaign contributions and lobbying in order to keep this country and the world going forward uh, dependent on fossil fuels. That's the bad news. Uh, the good news is that right now, today, right here on Capitol Hill, we had a 1,000 young people from the Sunrise Movement over there in the House of Representatives telling the House that the time is now to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy, telling the representatives in the House and all of us that they've got to have the guts to take on the fossil fuel industry, which is more concerned about short-term profits than the future of this planet. And I think the good news is also that more and more people are understanding that we cannot continue to, con continue to go forward in the way that we have. The terrible wildfires uh, in California, which claimed over 85 lives, destroyed 14,000 buildings, uh, have told the American people that if we don't get our act together, what we saw in California is going to be commonplace, not only in this country and around the world. And as all of you know, uh, in the last month or so, we have had two reports, uh, one from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the other from uh, 13 agencies of the federal government, and they said the same thing. They said that if we do not substantially reduce carbon emissions, if we don't transform our energy system into sustainable energy, the damage that will be done to this planet is irreparable, will be irreparable, will be impacting our kids and our grandchildren. So there is that growing understanding that we have to stand together globally and take on the greed and recklessness of the fossil fuel industry. So that's uh, the message of today. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of uh, obstacles in our way, but there is a growing movement uh, to demand that Congress finally act on behalf of the American people and not just the people who own the fossil fuel industry. Uh, if uh, I think we've got some questions coming in, Josh. Yeah, we do. Um, we have one. Um we have one from Linda who says, uh, what are some simple and strong talking points the general public can use to encourage awareness on alternative energies? Uh, the talking points are pretty simple, and that is to suggest that even if you do not believe in the devastating reality of climate change, that if you want cheaper electricity, we should be moving to solar uh, and to wind which in many instances now is less expensive uh, than fossil fuel. And I think the other talking point is that within the scientific community, the debate about the reality and devastation of climate change is gone. Uh, the scientific community is virtually united in understanding that climate change is real, caused by human activity, uh, and already causing devastating problems. But Bottom line here is, what corporate America knows, what many of us know, is that we have got to invest in sustainable energy, in solar, in wind, in geothermal. That is the future for energy in this country and around the world. Josh, you got anything else? Yeah, John says, how do we get our Congress to pass laws that divest our use of fossil fuels? Uh, essentially, what we need is a strong grassroots movement. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, the fossil fuel industry has spent over the 
10-year period, $1.7 billion in campaign contributions and in lobbying. So these guys are all over the place talking, telling Congress that they have got to maintain the status quo. And the only antidote to that, and we're seeing it today with the Sunrise Movement over there in the House, is standing up uh, in a variety of ways, getting involved in politics, getting involved in the democratic process, protesting and saying that the future of this country is not with coal, uh, it is not with oil, it's not with gas, but it is with solar, it is with wind, it is with geothermal, it is with other sustainable technologies. And by the way, the momentum is with us, but these guys in the fossil fuel industry have enormous power. Senator, what kind of changes can we make to encourage the use of solar energy for people? Well, first of all, uh, what we have got to do is have the federal government uh, start doing away uh, with all of the tax breaks and other benefits uh, that the fossil fuel industry uh, now receives and use that money and other money to make it easier for individuals and communities uh, to move toward solar. Uh, the truth of the matter is that if you put in many parts of the country if you put solar panels on your rooftop, what you will find is there is a payback period of six or seven years or eight years, and then you got free electricity. That's not a bad deal. So for a 20-year period, you can more than you can reduce your electric bills by more than 50 percent. That's pretty good. The problem is is that many people, working people, middle-income people, lower-income people, don't have the available capital to invest in those solar panels. And one of the things the federal government should be doing is making that money available, that lending available, to help any household in this country put solar panels on their rooftops and also to make sure that we are investing in larger scale solar utility uh, uh, utilities as well. Uh, Mary has a question. She says, how can we transform off of fossil fuels in a way that doesn't hurt working class people? That is a very good question. And I think uh, implicit, implicit in any legis serious legislation, uh, and including legislation that I offered several years ago, is to make certain that we do not blame the workers in the fossil fuel industry, whether they're coal miners or people who work on oil rigs. They are not the cause of the, of the crisis in climate change and they should not be punished. So in all serious legislation that's out there, there is a substantial uh, amount of money going into helping those workers uh, get retrained, get the education that they need, uh, and helping those communities that are negatively impacted by the transition away from fossil fuel. It's a very good issue, Mary, and I'm glad that you raised it. Coal miners are not our enemy. People who work in the oil industry are not our enemy. They have to make a living. They have to take care of their families. We understand that. They should not be punished as we transition away from fossil fuel. Maybe one more, Josh. Yeah, one more. So um, we have another question that says, can climate change be considered a national th security threat to move us from a war economy to a green energy and jobs economy? Uh, who, who asked that? Uh, this is from Tarek. Tarek? You know, it's a funny thing that you asked that, Tarek. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was in a debate. And somebody said, well, what is the major foreign policy concern that you have? And I said, you know, climate change. And people laughed at me, oh, my goodness, how silly can you be? It's supposed to be terrorism and all that other stuff. Well, terrorism is a very real threat. But to my mind, climate change and the devastation that it is wreaking on this planet right now and will in future years is, in fact, a national security issue. It's a national security issue because when you have drought all over the world and people cannot grow their crops, food will not be available to the people who need it. There'll be mass migrations of people from one country to the other who are driven off of their homeland because they cannot survive. When you have wildfires like the one we saw in California, and those fires take place all over the world, of course that's a national security issue issue. So seeing the price of food rise or the lack of avail the availability of food, seeing flooding, seeing migrations of people, 
seeing the federal government having to spend hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars repairing the damage that extreme weather disturbances have caused. Of course that is a national security issue, and it should be seen uh, in that light. So bottom line is uh, I happen to believe, I happen to agree with what the recent reports stated, and that is there is a global crisis taking place right now. In every, it's going to impact every country on Earth. And our job is to stand up now before the damage becomes irreparable, bring people together. And when we do that, by the way, when the United States leads the world in getting China and Russia and other countries together to fight climate change, not only will we be on the right side of justice, not only will we be protecting the needs of our kids and our grandchildren, but we will also be creating millions of good paying jobs. And in the long run, we will also be lowering utility bills in this country. No doubt in my mind that being aggressive in transforming our energy system is exactly what we have to do. So let's all stand together. Let's have the courage to take on the very powerful fossil fuel industry. Let's save this planet for future generations. Thank you all very much.